In today's research review, we're going to be talking about a research article that showed alpha lipoic acid combined with superoxide dismutase were shown to be beneficial in the treatment of people with chronic lower back pain. Hey, how's it going everybody? Remy Sovereign here from RemySovereign.com. Welcome back to another research review. And what we're going to be covering today is a research article that showed the combination of alpha lipoic acid and superoxide dismutase when combined together were shown to be effective in the treatment of chronic lower back pain. Now, just to jump into things right off the bat here, the title of this research article is titled Alpha Lipoic Acid and Superoxide Dismutase in the Treatment of Chronic Lower Back Pain. Now, this research article was published in the European Journal of Physiology and Rehabilitation Medicine. And essentially, the purpose of this research article was that the authors were looking to detect improvements in pain and functional activities of daily living in people with chronic lower back pain using a daily dosage of 600 milligrams of alpha lipoic acid and 140 international units of superoxide dismutase. Now, you're probably wondering what is the rationale for using this formula and why did the author specifically choose this formula of 600 milligrams of alpha lipoic acid and 140 international units of superoxide dismutase? Well, the rationale was that this formula has been previously shown to be beneficial in people with diabetic neuropathy, who have neurological problems associated with diabetes. And that specific formula was shown to be beneficial in a previous research study. So the authors hypothesized that since it was beneficial in that population, it may be beneficial in people with, with chronic lower back pain with and without radiculopathy. And so the recruitment and inclusion criteria for the study was individuals with chronic lower back pain that had lower back pain for greater than 12 weeks. Anyone equal to or less than 12 weeks with lower back pain were not included in the study and individuals required to be in the study had to be of age of 18 years or older. And so the mean average age came out to be 72 years old and there were a total of 98 participants recruited for the study. Now, with regards to the 98 participants recruited to the study, 80 of them were females and 18 were males. So there's a big discrepancy between the males and females, which is kind of a limitation, but I'll touch on that later in the study. So with regards to these characteristics and inclusion criteria, 37 of these individuals had sciatica or sciatic pain, 17 had osteoporosis. Now they didn't get to, into detail with regards to the specific causes of sciatica or sciatic pain or the individual's injuries that were causing their lower back pain. They just kind of kept it to the general chronic lower back pain for the inclusion criteria for individuals that were experiencing that lower back pain. So with regards to their methodology now, what they were looking at, what they were assessing was three primary things or primary objectives was firstly was the pain medications that individuals were taking. So they were looking to determine if there was an improvement or reduction in the amount of pain medications individuals were taking from baseline to 20 days post, 40 days post, and 60 days post uh, treatment of the 600 milligrams of the alpha lipoic acid and 140 international units of the superoxide dismutase. And they also looked and they used uh, two different measurement scales. They use the Roland Morris Disability Questionnaire, which is essentially just a questionnaire that assesses an individual's ability to perform activities of daily living that is associated with lower back pain. So an example with regards to this questionnaire would be, I have trouble sleeping at night because of my back. So an individual would either check yes or no to that if they have trouble sleeping because of their back. And so there's a whole questionnaire with regards to that. And they assess that at baseline 20 days, 40 days, and 60 days. And the last measurement was just a pain rating scale, which essentially is there's two opposite sides of the spectrum, one side being no pain, the other side being unbearable pain or intolerable pain. And then there's kind of in between stages with six items total throughout that scale. And so that was just used to assess pain at baseline, 20 days, 40 days, and 60 days in individuals to see if there was any reduction or significant reduction in pain as the study progressed and went on. Now, with regards to the results and findings, what they found was that there were some really interesting findings. So firstly, with regards to that pain rating scale, I'll stick on this topic, was that they noticed a significant reduction in pain with regards to 20 days, 40 days, and 60 days, and between visits. And at the total end of all things, at the total end of the study, 86 out of 96 people reported no pain or having no pain anymore, which is a pretty significant finding with regards to the study. And it, this may show that that alpha lipoic acid and superoxide dismutase were working in helping these individuals. Secondly, the Roland Morris Disability Questionnaire. So essentially there's 40, 24 questions with regards to that questionnaire. And they only identified or pointed out five of them in this study to be clinically relevant. 
And so the five that they determined to be clinically relevant, I'll kind of read off to you guys and show you the improvements from baseline to 60 days with regards to these questions that people answered. So the first one, because of my back, I use a handrail to get upstairs. So at baseline, 43 out of 98 people reported having problems with this or they had to use a handrail to get upstairs. After 60 days, only 17 out of 98 had reported this after the 60 days of treatment. Now, this was not a statistical finding, which is important to keep in mind. Moving on to the second one here. Because of my back, I have to hold on to something to get out of an easy chair. 38 out of 98 people had problems with this at baseline. After 60 days, only 8 out of 98, which was statistically significant. Next one, I find it difficult to get out of a chair because of my back. 32 out of 98 people at baseline, 2 out of 98 after 60 days of treatment. That was statistically significant as well. The next one, I sleep less well because of my back. 77 out of 98 people responded yes to this. And after 60 days, only 6 out of 98. And that was statistically significant as well. And the last one here, because of my back, I go up stairs more slowly than usual. 45 out of 98 at baseline. After 60 days, 3 out of 98. And that was statistically significant. So four of the five were statistically significant. But all with regards to those five kind of questions, they all showed improvements, which is important to keep in mind. And they were rather pretty significant improvements, especially with the ones with regards to sleep. And that also would su further support that the alpha lipoic acid and the superoxide dismutase were working as kind of an oral kind of supplementation for individuals. Lastly, with regards to the pain medication, 72 out of the 98 patients at baseline were taking some sort of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, a corticosteroid, or a painkiller. However, after 60 days, only eight out of 98 people still had that need for pain medication. So there was a significant improvement, and actually there was a significant improvement after 40 days, but 60 days we see a significant drop from 72 to eight people still needing those pain medications or pain relief medications, which would further suggest and further support that alpha lipoic acid and superoxide dismutase were playing some sort of significant role in reducing the individual's pain and also maybe helping with the recovery. Now you guys are probably wondering how superoxide dismutase and alpha lipoic acid may be beneficial in the treatment of chronic lower back pain. So I'll touch on this briefly and to begin I'll touch with superoxide dismutase. Superoxide dismutase is an enzyme that is responsible for changing the configuration of the superoxide anion. So the superoxide anion is a free radical that may cause cell damage or cell death if it accumulates. And it normally will accumulate with regards to problems in the electron transport chain. And so superoxide dismutase, essentially that dismutase portion is just gonna mutate that superoxide anion and change its configuration or shape into a new molecule, which may be an oxygen molecule or it could be hydrogen peroxide. The point being though, is that it's eliminating that superoxide anion, which may prevent that cell death or cell damage and would help in pain relief or in recovery in theory. Now with regards to alpha lipoic acid, it essentially may act in a similar fashion as superoxide dismutase, but it may interact with other free radicals such as hydroxyls, peroxides, or superoxides, and it may help prevent the formation of those molecules and also help prevent any cell damage or cell death. But it's also been shown alpha lipoic acid to be beneficial with regards to increasing blood flow to nerves, helping with nerve conduction, and also with metabolism in individuals with diabetic neuropathy. So there may be other benefits as well with regards to alpha lipoic acid, and that could be maybe applied to individuals with sciatic pain or sciatica because of the nerve problems or pinched nerve uh, damage that may occur with regards to maybe certain free radicals formulating that alpha lipoic acid could maybe prevent that. Now let's talk about some of the limitations with regards to the study. So the first limitation that I see is that they didn't specifically talk about or specifically look at the injuries or the cause of an individual's lower back pain. Rather, they just kind of grouped everyone into a category of chronic lower back pain. Now everyone's case in this instance would be essentially different because we have people with experiencing sciatica, we have people with osteoporosis, and then we have people with other problems that they didn't indicate in the study. And so with regards to alpha lipoic acid and superoxide dismutase, while they may have benefits to many injuries or many problems, we don't know how they may act on specific injuries or specific cases. So that's something important to keep in mind and future research should be specifically looking to these molecules and this combination to kind of more specific injuries and see how they may benefit specific injuries and not just kind of a chronic lower back pain case. Also, the other kind of limitation here is that there are a large majority of females as opposed to males. 
And so a future study should include more males and see if they can get the same response because the physiology between males and females is slightly different and that can maybe produce different results or different kind of benefits to the ethyl lipoic acid and superoxide dismutase reacting within a male and female's body. And the other thing to keep in mind is that the average age was 72 years old. So this was primarily an elderly population recruited in the study. Although individuals 18 years or older were recruited, but just the majority of people were 72 years old. So we don't know how this kind of dosage of alpha lipoic acid and superoxide dismutase may react in a younger individual as opposed to an elderly individual. It may react more beneficial in an elderly individual as opposed to a younger individual. And there may be different dosages that those individuals may need. And so future research should kind of look into that because there may be different response rates with regards to that. And so those are just kind of a few limitations. There's a few more that I can get into, but I just wanted to kind of touch on those as some of the important things to kind of consider and to think about with regards to the study. Now, it's really interesting to see this, guys, and it's kind of supporting that this alpha lipoic acid and superoxide dismutase are two kind of powerful antioxidants that may help in the treatment of chronic lower back pain. Now, with regards to my injury and my recovery and my lower back injury, I never specifically took alpha lipoic acid or superoxide dismutase, nor did I really know about it, nor was I educated at all at the time. So this is stuff that I'm just kind of currently learning and trying to educate other individuals about it. And now I'm not suggesting people go take alpha lipoic acid or superoxide dismutase. That's not what I'm here for. I'm just here to educate individuals about how these kind of work and what the research shows. Now, with regards to alpha lipoic acid and superoxide dismutase, I would love to hear if any of you guys currently take either of these substances and if you've found them beneficial or have found them not beneficial and what maybe your dosage is or what your formula that you're taking or if you're taking it with other molecules or substances as well. And if maybe if you're taking it for a different sort of injury or different sort of problem and not just back pain. I'd kind of love to hear about that. And if this is your first time watching one of my videos, guys, or this is your first time watching this video, be sure to subscribe as I'm always posting different tips regarding lower back injuries and lower back pain. Okay, guys, I wish you guys all the best and a successful and productive day and take care.